fight to try to stop shoplifting and help prevent stores from shutting down. New York Governor Hochul proposing a $45 million effort to stop retail theft and property crime. $45 million. That's a lot of money. But shoplifting here is also up 60% for some reason. After entering the store, police say customers were ordered to get to the ground. The suspects then went to town, stealing about $51,000 worth of high-end merchandise. We had a shoplifter in the store, and we had it escorted him out of the store four times. The fifth time, he got upset, and he threatened us. In each case, the thieves are in and out quickly, taking off with tens of thousands of dollars in merchandise. The smash and grab efforts, they go in and swipe everything off the shelves, and oftentimes they're loading into a stolen vehicle. The problem getting so bad, New York State is setting up a task force to tackle it. It aims to bolster security measures for businesses and establishes task forces within law enforcement that specifically target shoplifters. Our criminal justice system is insane. So shoplifting is up 64% in New York, which means that if a store was getting robbed five times a day, it's now getting robbed eight or nine times a day. And this trend shows no signs of slowing down. And according to a recent survey, 93% of New York City grocers were shoplifted last year. We're talking soap, candles, even the ice cream is getting stolen. And not only is it locked up, they unscrewed the handles, there's a lock on the top, and there's locks on the bottom of every refrigerator. But even though New York's governor has a $45 million plan to address shoplifting, Critics say it's not gonna do anything because it doesn't address the real reasons why crime here is out of control. On top of that, it's recently been exposed that when a business does dial 911 for shoplifting, the response times are so slow, the criminals usually get away. But according to this article, officers in high crime areas have started WhatsApp text groups. Apparently, merchants can share photos and intel with each other and with the police to help stop criminals and prevent crimes in progress. It's like a secret high-tech version of 911. The rest of us can't text. But before we look at why shoplifting in New York City is likely only going to get worse, it's important to understand that the types of shoplifting the city is now experiencing are unlike anything that's ever happened here before. So, one of the craziest heists in recent New York City memory happened a couple of weeks ago right here at the Gucci store in the middle of New York's meatpacking district. Apple store across the street. There's a luxury hotel. There's a Tesla dealership. Lululemon. It's the entire corner here right on 14th Street. You can see the suspects, two men and a woman at work. Police say customers were ordered to get to the ground. The suspects then went to town stealing about $51,000 worth of high-end merchandise. Now to the getaway. Now I'm not a detective, but that woman, her face is clearly visible. She'll definitely get caught, and after she gets caught in a plea deal, she'll rat out the other two. But these crooks had time. They had as much time as they wanted to steal whatever they wanted from that store, and that's exactly what they did. No security, no police. They just walked in and walked out. Now yes, 45 million is a lot of money to address crimes like this, but the criminals here made off with $51,000 worth of stuff. And these new plans, not only do they ignore the main reason why this is happening, those criminals are still out there. The woman pulled up to the curb in a black Honda CRV right near the store entrance. Once the men were inside the vehicle, it sped off. Police say the suspects drove through the Lincoln Tunnel onto New Jersey, and from there, uh, we don't know where they went. So the getaway car was actually parked right here and there's a fire hydrant this is actually a no parking zone right in front of the store it's almost like the perfect place to illegally park if you're gonna do something else that's even more illegal and then get away right away because there's no traffic although they did almost hit a cyclist at the end of the street now the getaway vehicle they were in was also likely stolen and what's also crazy is when you look at that security footage you don't see any flashing lights out here on the street this was a clean escape no one was coming to stop these guys and although the store employees probably called 911 the reason so many stores are closing is because 911 isn't as effective as it used to be. I don't understand this. They have security there. Obviously, security did not want to engage with them because you don't know if they're carrying guns or whatever. But they took their darn time. They were wheeling luggage. They had big armfuls of bags. I mean, it didn't look like they ran in and ran out. Interesting. So the store itself had security. But honestly, you can't blame security for failing to engage armed bandits. This little white bag is just not worth your life. And what's also pretty crazy is the time at which this took place 
broad daylight, just like right now. This did not go down in the middle of the night. It happened during the middle of the day. They're not worried about police. They're not worried about consequences. They're not even worried about getting caught. And you'd assume that most $50,000 heists involve criminals escaping into the night. But that's not what happened. They just drove down 14th Street. But if you think $50,000 is a lot, the next heist we're going to cover, which also took place this past month, the criminals made off with five times as much stuff. The padlock has been replaced on the cellar doors at Rebag, a luxury boutique where thieves broke in through the basement last week and took off with handbags and jewelry worth $225,000. So this next heist has a lot of similarities with the Gucci heist, except the store is smaller and the crooks made off with way more money, which makes me think it's an inside job. Now, when I say money, I mean merchandise. And this place was a luxury consignment seller. But according to the news, this cheap padlock here with a four digit combination. This was supposed to keep everything in the store safe, which it was sadly unable to do. Yes, I know this is a replacement, but believe it or not, this door right here, this is how the crooks got in. Police say they were later seen on MTA video after they took the subway to Queens. Although the burglary happened in the middle of the night, it's yet another high profile, high end theft. So these crooks, once again, not the brightest bulbs on the shelf. They were smart enough to get in here and steal everything and get away with it, but they weren't smart enough not to take the subway where there's cameras everywhere. But this had to have been an inside job because how else do you know what's on the other side of a door like this. The basements in these 100 year old buildings are not exactly straightforward. There's all kinds of twists and turns. It's like a labyrinth down there. Plus there's probably other security measures, different doors that are locked, cameras, other devices like alarms that could alert the authorities. And now the question becomes, how did they know what was inside here? Were they employees? Were they vendors who delivered items to the store? And to prove this was premeditated, right next door, you have another luxury store. Ditto across the street and across the street next to that. This neighborhood is basically all stores. And what this basically means is that it was not a random act of theft. No, that's not what happened. They knew that that hatch led inside the store. They knew what was inside the store. They knew what time to go and they got a quarter million dollars worth of stuff. That's insane. And police say in this area, there have been 30 burglaries so far this year. These stores are all gonna close because of theft. First protocol is just to make sure your staff is safe, which is the most scary part about it all. Tommy Torres and his colleague, Matty Gelito work at Seven for All Mankind just next door to Rebag. Soho community groups say security's been stepped up, but frustration here is giving way to resignation. So that interview took place at this store, which is next to the store that was ransacked. You gotta feel so bad for the people working at a little store like this, putting their life on the line. But the thing nobody seems interested in talking about is that if you steal under a thousand dollars worth of stuff in New York, it's a misdemeanor. Now yes, $250,000, that's way more than a misdemeanor amount. But how do you think those criminals got practice working up to those big numbers? They probably gained experience robbing lesser stores for lesser amounts of money. In fact, repeat offenders are so common that 30% of the retail theft crime in 2022 was committed by just 300 people. But unfortunately, repeat offenders don't just target luxury boutiques, which is why the next heist on our list is probably the saddest one of them all. So here we have a small, privately owned and operated bodega slash grocery store. These things are all over the place. There's actually one right across the street, which is open and operating. But one of these recently got hit so hard by theft that the people there were terrified and afraid for their lives. And these are places that serve the local community with things everybody can afford. Naeli De Jesus says shoplifting at her Bronx Associated supermarket's gotten so bad, her employees fear what could happen if they try to stop a shoplifter. Take the shoplifter who came to her store five times trying to steal. The fifth time we asked him to leave the store, he threatened to come back with a gun. Now, it's one thing for crooks to rob a consignment store and shut it down, but a place that sells food, this is the type of place a neighborhood relies on. And it's not like the owners of this place are getting filthy rich. The grocery business is a low margin business. It's not exactly charity. It's still a business, but it's not a get rich quick. That's for sure. And the idea that little places like this are targets for armed robbers, that is incredibly frightening and some
something has to be done. But the problem is New York City's laws are so lax, there's not a whole lot that can be done to stop criminals from getting emboldened to the levels we've seen. Thankfully, my brother um, was able to escape towards the end of the store with about 15 to 20 customers, and they locked themselves in a room. This time, we just got lucky. Retail theft is skyrocketing. Honestly, that's the most frightening thing I think I've ever seen. And here you've got employees ducking behind countertops, taking cover. This is almost horrific. And after a store gets shut down for shoplifting, all of the other neighborhood stores raise their prices. And it's not because they're greedy. If one store closes because of theft, the other store's probably getting looted as well. They have to raise their prices to stay in business, and then they have to raise them again because all the criminals are gonna target them, and the customers at the store have to absorb a certain percentage of shoplifting every time they buy anything. We're the ones paying for it. It definitely contributes to inflation. People in this city are struggling enough trying to afford basic stuff, but because of theft, every single thing in the store now costs more than it used to. And even though locking up expensive items like they do at CVS might stop them from getting stolen from a store like this, it still means the store has to raise prices because to open those boxes, you need an employee with a key. That means you need more staff. Everything contributes to higher prices. And the real scary thing is that this contributes to food deserts. This place is closed. That place is the only one left. Don't expect to buy convenience items across the street. That whole corner's already shut down. Although that's not what the governor says. Shoplifters, which Governor Kathy Hochul is going after, introducing a $45 million initiative to drive down retail theft. It aims to bolster security measures for businesses and establishes task forces within law enforcement that specifically target shoplifters. The legislation also increases penalties for those- So higher penalties for those selling stolen goods. How about higher penalties for stealing the goods in the first place? But it doesn't do that. Luckily, it apportions money for police to dedicate to full-time theft prevention, which is definitely something retailers in harder-hit neighborhoods need for sure. But although 25 million sounds like a lot, New York City has a shortage of police. And one wonders what the police will not be able to do if they get pulled off one thing and put on another. You've now got moped gangs roaming the streets, snatching purses, snatching cell phones. Assaults are also rising along with theft. And there's also a $10 million uh, amount that's going to go towards district attorneys so that they can more aggressively prosecute retail theft. But the district attorneys we have aren't prosecuting the crimes that we already have. In this town, even criminals who attack the police are let go without bail. Which makes you wonder, what is a DA who doesn't prosecute crime going to do with an extra $10 million? It's got to stop. And there's a reason that Governor Hochul is going at the shoplifters because, well, it's part of a growing trend. 2020. So this does have to stop. But to some extent, the governor's hands are tied on this one. She can't just rewrite the laws of New York. But one part of this new plan will allow businesses to have tax credits if they hire security. It's definitely not an ideal crime prevention strategy. And although it's better than nothing, why is it this entire plan just to hire more police? Why do we think that doing something other than hiring police is going to stop crime in this town? Hiring more police and changing the laws so the criminals they arrest stay in jail. At a minimum, it would be nice to see these new store security guards be able to detain criminals until police arrive. And one wonders if businesses will be able to hire armed security who will actually be able to deter a threat. But at the end of the day, nothing is probably going to change here in New York because nobody wants to address the real reasons why crime is out of control. So many critics of New York City are saying that the crime that we're experiencing now all started from laws that were passed back in 2020, specifically bail reform laws that have had a major effect on policing and what happens after somebody gets arrested. And these laws changed how and when judges could impose monetary bail on someone who was arrested. Bail is collateral that you put down in exchange for your return to the court when it's time for your trial. If you come back, you get the money back, but the problem with bail is that not everyone can afford bail. Somebody who's rich and breaks the law can get out of jail, whereas somebody who's poor and may or may not have broken the law also gets arrested, they're stuck because the bail is too high. This is a real issue. And since we live in a country where everyone is innocent until proven guilty, it seemed to many here in New York that bail was an unjust way of locking up potentially innocent people. But now the problem is dangerous criminals are free to walk the streets and re-offend. And this is especially problematic when you consider that 30% of all crime in 2022 was committed by just 300 people who were not able to be kept behind bar 
cars until their trials could begin. Or worse, they just paid fines and were let go. And just think of the guy that robbed the grocery store five times and got away with it. That's just incredibly frightening. People like that shouldn't be out there. And this is happening all over the city, even if it doesn't make the news. The other problem is that New York's bail reform laws no longer allow judges to consider how dangerous a person may or may not be because a dangerous person should probably be kept off the streets, but this state does not allow that. And in a recent travesty of justice, gang members who attacked police were released without bail, and then they fled the state to try and escape justice. And what's crazy about that is the district attorney did not ask the judge for bail, even though attacking police is a bail eligible offense. So even if we change the bail laws, if we've got the same DAs and the same judges, our criminal justice system is insane. Mayor Eric Adams once again attacking New York's bail laws, placing the blame for the rise in crime entirely on the back of these reforms that were first passed in 2019. So that video is from a year ago. The mayor, a former police officer, he knows that things here are a mess. And he's aware that the justice system in New York, which does protect the innocent is completely being taken advantage of by criminals who are using it as a get out of jail free card. Recidivists are driving crime in New York City, according to the mayor and NYPD officials. 716 individuals, the NYPD says, are responsible for 30% of. So there you go. 700 people responsible for some of the most violent crimes, just like the 300 people responsible for most of the shoplifting. This is called recidivism. Recidivism means that a person does something bad, experiences a negative of consequence and then keeps doing it. Although if they get released without bail, I'm not so sure what the negative consequence is or if there even was one. And what that could mean is that laws like New York City's bail reform initiatives, they might be great for keeping the innocent out of jail, but they keep the guilty out of jail as well. And at the exact same time, the streets remain dangerous. And the big question is, how do we protect people who haven't done anything wrong while protecting the rest of us from becoming victims and from having our supermarkets shut down, from having luxury items ripped off the shelves in stores that tourists will come to visit. Let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.